you are great and greatly to be praised, God. We take nothing for granted. Have your way in this house on today. We love you. It is in your son Jesus' name we pray and ask it all. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody ready for joy to the world? I think you all know this song.
Jesus, so holy, so lovely, make it mine. You are the sing my life, no hope, no joy, you are the lift to the angels sing, glory, glory, glory to the blue.
thank you for this day. Thank you for allowing us to um, come together as a family. And even for the people watching online, thank you for allowing them to tune in and receive what you have for them today, God. I just pray for everybody that has a prayer request, things, different things people are going through in this time of need. I pray for people with depression that are going through different different things, God. I pray for people that are feeling lonely at this time. I just pray for the youth, God, that you just call us into your calling that we receive that, God. And just I just pray for everybody, whatever different things people have going on. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And the people of God said, amen, amen. God is so good and he's worthy of our praise. You can have a seat. Amen, amen. Any particular thing God's put on your heart lately, Trey? Um, I mean, just... And you know it's Christmas time. Just really, just the importance of people. Really, not even just your loved ones or your family. Just the importance of people. Because I feel like sometimes it's so easy for us to just look past everybody. You know, I feel like we should treat everybody like our family. You know. Yes. Amen. 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 That is so true. God has blessed us exceedingly abundantly above all that we can think or imagine. And God wants to do the same for all. And there are some people who are going through some things like Trey prayed earlier. But we pray God's peace and that God be their source and they know who their source is coming from. Amen. So welcome again. God bless each and every one of you for being here. We thank you for your generosity and all your prayers and continued prayers to, and support to AFCC. We thank you for helping with food pantry and those who are without uh, maybe a roof over their head or food to eat. We have been blessed that we can be a blessing to so many. So you can give yourselves a hand for that because you have helped out. You have played a big part in that. Amen. Hallelujah. So and now, as far as giving, you can give as you leave the building. You can mail it in. You can text to 84321. But we just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. And God loves you for being a, a generous giver. Amen. So we just want you to continue to worship the Lord with us as we have continued music and the word is just going to be awesome. Amen. Amen. So be blessed on today. Be blessed as you come to do no other but to do what? Worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Trey. Be blessed.
always too busy. We are never alone, because God is always with us. You're right, Cameron. Hi, boys. Mom! Aww. I love you. I love you, too. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Are we ready to open presents? faced with a lot of different things, you need to be reminded that God is able, I don't care what you're facing, God is able to make all grace abound toward you. And um, I'm a living witness of that. Has, has, has his grace been on, on you, especially now? Have you noticed his grace? It's like, God, thank you for your grace. Some people complain, but I'm saying, Lord, thank you for your grace. We're going to continue our series today talking about God is with us, but I'm going to ask these two young men to come and join me on platform and uh, put your hands together for Cameron and Trenton. I get it right? Yeah, man, yeah, 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 yeah. Are your mics up? Step up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all, y'all, man, you, you all grew since the beginning. I remember you when you were born. Y'all were little shorties, but now y'all get, y'all got some size to you. And got nerve enough to something. You had a, had a, uh, what kind of, like a, a Kansas City Chiefs hat on today? Is that your team? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, use that microphone. 
Yep. <laughs> so who's your favorite player on that team? Don't say Mahomes. Dang, dang it. Who? Patrick Mahomes. Okay. <laughs> okay, I thought you was going to say. You, you like football too? Yes. So, so, so tell me who your dad's, because your, I know you're probably on your dad's team, right? What is that team is that? The Chiefs. The te- oh, you, everybody want to be on the winning team. I tell you what. All right, ain't nothing wrong with it. Ain't nothing wrong with it. I'm cool, but it's good to see you. So you guys are going to read for me today, if you don't mind. Uh, uh, whatever you have, go on and bring it. And uh, I'm looking forward to hearing. <laughs> Who starts? <laughs> okay. <laughs> the perfect Christmas gift, Jesus. This is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother, Mary, was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Joseph, to whom she was engaged, was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly. So he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All of his, all of this courage to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, look, the virgin virgin will will conceive conceive a child. child. She She will will give birth birth to a son, son, and they will call him Emmanuel, Emmanuel, which which means God is with us. us. Wow, that is awesome. Put your hands together for them. Just before you take your seats, um, um, how are you guys doing with with school? Really good. uh, Even online? Yeah. Yes. You, you all mind telling your grades or you don't want it to do that right now? I have all threes. You have three? Now, what is a three? Uh, it's like the highest thing you can get for good. Oh, yeah? A three, huh? Yeah. That, so that deserves a hand, right? All right. <laughs> how, how do you like, how do you like <laughs> Zoom studying or doing, doing via, like, standing home on a computer? Uh, now your mom is an educator, both of you all. So, so, so no, she's probably listening. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. That's good. That's good. You miss your you miss your friends? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. So it's kind of hard to sit behind a computer screen all day. All right. All right. I I I, I totally get it. I totally. So hopefully this is only for a short while, and we'll be out of these masks uh, anyway. Uh, and uh, so I think one of you are going to pray for them, the, the sermon. Why, why don't you, Cameron, I think you're ready. You can pray. Or both of you can, either one. Uh, okay. Um, God, please, please pray over all the people in this church right now that none of us get COVID and we Amen. stay negative from this virus and that you take it away one day so we'll be out of these masks and hug and see each other and pray all over us to love and get rid of our sins and declare the past if we did bad but look in the future not the past so we can have the greatest future follow your dreams and be the best you can be amen birth of Jesus, the Christ, um, Emmanuel, as they read, and they did an amazing job of reading. Thank God for school, even online school. 
Uh, I appreciate all the educators. And uh, we have some teachers that are part of our <laughs> congregation, and we appreciate you. And I thank God for all the moms. Don't y'all stop having babies, man. Nothing like children. That's, that's, that's just me, man. Hey, that's, that's right. Dion clap. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Keep on having them kids. And nothing like, nothing like children. They'll lighten the load. It is amazing to, to, to watch them and see God use them. It's amazing. So the birth of Jesus Christ, <laughs> you know, he had a special name, Jesus, Yeshua. And then his name was also Emmanuel. That's what the angel said. His name shall be Emmanuel, which is interpreted God with us. Can you imagine a pregnant teenage Mary and Joseph? We got any teenagers in here? Well, I won't say the pregnant teenager. But at pre I'm, just, I'm trying to just make this that is not, I got to better stick to my notes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. But my point is this. Can you imagine a pregnant teenage girl, Mary and Joseph, traveling nearly 65 miles to get to Bethlehem? Uh, and they didn't have Uber, so on a donkey, on a four-day journey. Can you imagine how many times she says, are we there yet, Joseph? You know, I've traveled with uh, a pregnant woman, you know, before. And, um, you know, even in a vehicle, a bump can be a problem. Can I get a witness, men, the real men in the house? It, it, it can be a problem. It can be a problem. Can you imagine a donkey? On a, not on a paved road, but a rocky road. And they were traveling <laughs> four days on a donkey. And when they get there to find out that because of the governor's uh, census conference, I'll call it, <laughs> that there was no room in the inn. I think about this. It's like, wow, wow, that, 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 that wasn't the easiest thing. And sometimes not only was there no hotel, no motel, no Uber, no Lyft, and when they got there, they didn't have a, they, they didn't have a, a Hilton, didn't have a Motel 6 even, and they didn't have an Airbnb, but they had a stable. And at that time, if you even look into some study, the stable wasn't even like sometimes what we think because a lot of things were made of rock then, maybe an indentation in the wall and a place where uh, uh, animals were. And, but that was where... They gave birth. And here's my thing is that sometimes we can have a situation and because the situation is less than perfect or that it's a challenge for us to get to where God calls us to go even though we're obeying him, we'll struggle with whether or not God is still with us. And can I let you know that, you know, God is not just with us when things are good. He's with us when things are challenging. Hello? And some of us have, <laughs> some of us need to be reminded of that. We need to be reminded of that over and over again. So, so now Mary gives birth to the Savior of the world, and they finally see the Holy Child. And again, I can just imagine all of the emotions of finally getting to see Jesus or God incarnate, God in human flesh. You know, I imagine there was a lot of emotions that overtook them, joy and some peace and some excitement and a lot of expectation, and I can say that because I know a little bit about, you know, being pregnant. I know a little bit about being pregnant because, you know, we had three, and I remember the first, and a lot of these women say, you don't know nothing about being pregnant. I know a little bit. I didn't say I know fully, but we carried that baby for nine months. We had um, cravings. It was hard for us to sleep. We twisted and we turned in the bed. I'm telling you, it was, it was something, I'm telling you. And then one of the most challenging parts is when we, our water broke. And we went to the hospital. And then when, when, when we were there and we were there and they put these things on our stomach. And the doctor was trying to make sure everything was right, and the baby wouldn't come very fast. We were there for an hour. didn't happen. Two hours, three hours, four hours, 10 hours, 15 hours. I was, we was about to give up. But you can't put the baby back. After 23 hours of labor, when he finally came, 
we were emotional. I remember myself, I uh, found a corner and tear began, began to come down my eye. And I just began to think of, wow, Lord, you know, you know, this birth and bringing a child, it wasn't all the work. That was part of it. But, but to see God bring forth his plan, his purpose, and, 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 and there was, yeah, yeah, you can give God a, a, a. But can you imagine the faces of Mary and Joseph? You know, think of the conversations, because I had drumsticks and instruments ready for my firstborn, and all of them, actually, because I, wanted, I had these ideas. Can you imagine what it was like for Mary and Joseph to have the conversation of what my baby's going to look like? What he's going to be like? And, and people talk about, well, my baby held their head up today. Well, my baby did this today. You know, my, my, my baby uh, crawled for the first time. Can you, in the bragging thing, say, my baby God. My baby is God. He's going to speak to, <laughs> he's going to stop funeral processions and say, hey, get up and live. He's going to turn water to wine. Can you imagine? <laughs> my baby, y'all think y'all baby bad. Y'all ain't going to. Y'all don't even want to go there. My baby, God. God in the flesh. Can you imagine the conversations that they have? And you know when you hold a baby, and Jesus was a baby. Can you imagine the conversation? Once upon a time, you know, I met Joseph, and uh, we were engaged to be married. But God changed our plans, and he revealed his plan. This, this angel came to me. Your name is Gabriel. And uh, why are you talking to me? Like, baby, yeah, I already know. I already know I was, I was there and uh, so forth and so on. We're blessed. And he goes and say, we're blessed to find out that, that she, the angel said I had favor with God and I was blessed and highly favored among women and that I would get pregnant and, and the Holy Spirit would be the one that impregnated me. When Joseph found out, he really didn't uh, take it too well. He wasn't too happy at first. Actually talking to her, her, her baby because, you know, we talked to them. And, um, but he was sleeping and an angel spoke to him and said, don't be afraid to take Mary because this very child is going to be of God. He's going to be the Savior of the world. He's going to be God with us. Can you imagine? Here's my first point is that after Mary and Joseph's faith journey, I can imagine them thinking about the faithfulness of God and taking a deep breath and uh, saying something like this. <laughs> God, you are with us every step of the way. And when I say that, it makes me ask this question. And this is my first point. Have you ever had a God has been with us moment? I mean, you, 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 you look back at your life and what you've been through, and, and you say, man, God, God, you've been with us. You know, all the way. And, and when I look at my life and when I look at some of you all's life, it, you know, you can relate to that. It's like, God, you've really been with us the whole way. You brought us. You taught us. Thank you, Jesus. You know, even when I think about, um, you know, I think about that one song. I really kind of like it. It says, uh, never would have made it without you. You know, and I thought I was going to lose it all, but you were there for me. Man, it's like, yeah, God, I've, I've had those moments, and, and I could just imagine holding that child in her arms. They probably said, God, you've been with us, and this child is a reminder that, God, you are with us. And I think that all of us need those reminders in our life that God has been with us the whole time. Are you with me today? <laughs> Reminds me of the, the preacher that was, he was sharing, and he was bringing the fire, and he was a young guy, and one of the old guys on the front row just began to weep and he just began to cry. And, um, <laughs> and at the end of the message, the service, he went to him and he says, what part of uh, my message really touched your heart to cause you to, 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 be, to cry? And he looked at the young man. He said, he said I'm sorry uh, that you thought it was something you said, but it was nothing that you said. He said, I just was sitting there thinking about the goodness of God thinking about how far he's brought me, thinking about how he's been with me the whole time. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I just think about God, you know, you've really been with us and I thank you for how 
how you've brought us, how you've made waves. And I know I didn't do it by myself, but it's been you with us all the time. Some say, Pastor, how does that moment look? Well, remember Abraham, uh, Abraham, when I think about Abraham, I think about um, Isaac and think about God's plan for them and how they went on Mount Moriah. And, and when he was there, the scripture said that, that Isaac was looking around. He says, I've done this before, but it's not like this. He says, something seems to be missing. We've got fire. We've got wood. But where's the sacrifice? Daddy, daddy, what, what, what's up? Now, it, it, but then he says something that's quite familiar. The Lord will provide. How many of you all got folks that, that, that you got a Lord, the Lord will provide person in your, your family? It don't make no difference how it looks. The Lord will provide. And just before he was getting ready to take, had the, had the knife drawn back, the Bible says that, that God spoke to Abraham. Hold your hand. Hold, 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 hold your hand. Slow your roll, Abe. He said, look in the thickets. He saw a ram in the bush. Now, here's my point. Abraham took the ram in the bush and went on and sacrificed it for the Lord. And, but, but my question is this, folks. Do you think it was just by happenstance that the, Lord, that, that the ram was in the bush? Absolutely not. God prepared the, the, the very ram to put a ram in the bush. And God has... Let me put it like this. Many of you all think that where you are is just by happenstance. You think that your job it was by happenstance. You think that you got healed by happenstance. You think you just happened to, 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 to make the right move. But can I let you know that God has been with you all the time and he's going to continue to be with you the whole time? Somebody give him, give him a real good praise. I mean a real good praise. He is God. Whew. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, I never would have made it. <laughs> I never would have made it. And then if you really want to take it back, my mom, they'll, they'll, they'll take you here. You know, when I look back over my life and when I think things over, I can truly say that I've been blessed. I got a testimony. Thank, thank you. I'm going to move on, but I'm just, I'm just feeling some kind of way right now. Will you help me give him a praise right now? We love you, Lord. So can I just share with you, yeah, I never would have made it without him. Why? Can I share with you? Because I believe it's that we weren't meant to do life alone. Why is this message so important? Because God never intended for you to do life alone. And, and, and witness to a neighbor one more time. Don't blow on their face, though, from a distance. You weren't meant to do life alone. And folks, can I let you know that this is from the beginning of time? If you read in Genesis, God wanted a family. So he set things up and then he made man. And then he says, he was saying, oh, he made something, this is good. He made something else, this is good. And the first time he says it's not good, when he says, saw man alone, he says, it's not good for man to be alone. Why? Because our, Proverbs says two is better than one. Hallelujah. That's why even during this time, can I let you know, folks, that even during this time, uh, and I was talking to one of my spiritual sons and that he did contract COVID. And they said, well, you know, they said, what, 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 what's, what do you, um, what's your biggest symptom? He said, well, I got, I can taste and, you know, can smell and all that stuff. And I don't have any chills. Da, 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 da. He said, my biggest symptom right now is loneliness. I'm thinking like, wow, that's interesting. Of all the things he could have said, he says, I'm tired of being by myself 14 days without anybody else. That's loneliness. So I'm letting you know that God did not want us to be alone. Are y'all with me today? And some of y'all are trying to do this thing alone. That is not God's plan. Can it get a good amen in this house? <laughs> Whew. Look what the scripture says in uh, the book of Luke 1 and 34. And this is, this is again, you are not meant to do life alone and I just over and over again want to make sure we iterate reiterate that Mary said to the angel this is the 34th verse how can this be talking as he said you're going to bring forth the child how can this be since I do not know man or I know not of man and and, and there are two points I pull out of that she asked the question is it's a natural question how 
And then she says, because I, those two emphasis, you know, how can I, that becomes a problem when you think it's only you. Then the angel says, well, wait a minute, let's, let's expand upon this. He answered her, you know, not just you, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. So it's not just you. Can I let you know that when you're doing what you do, it's not just you? When God calls you to do something, yeah, it would be a challenge if you had to do it yourself. I want you to know that even when I got up this morning, I, I feel a preach coming on right here. Why? Because when I got up this morning, if I say, well, I can't do this day by myself, that would be underst understandable. But when I say, God, I'm not trying to do it by myself, but I need you to go with me so we can do whatever you call me to do. When I got up this morning and, and, and when I came to band rehearsal, I said, God, I don't want to try to do this by myself. I need you. So therefore, you get in my hands, get in my feet, get in my vocal cords. When I preach today, I don't want to try to do it in my own strength. It's just not me, but the Holy Spirit shall come upon me, and then I'll be able to do what God has called me to do. Somebody give God a shout in this house because it's not, you're not by yourself. Ah. Oh. The Holy Spirit shall come upon you. And if there's one thing that the church needs in this last hour, we need the Holy Spirit to come upon us. We need to be overshadowed by the Holy Ghost. We need to not try to do it in our own strength. How can we do it? You can do all things. Why? Because he gives you the strength. Give him a shout in this house. Whew. Then he goes on. He says this. He says, therefore, also, not only, huh, you're not supposed to, you're not, you're not I'm, I'm, I'm feeling this one more time. God has not called you to do life alone. So therefore, he says, the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you. The power of God's going to overshadow you. And then he says, not only that, he says, there's someone called Elizabeth. I want you to go see her. Now you're going to get a witness. You got someone in the spirit realm. You're going to have someone in the natural realm. She's going to walk you through this and say, you're not by yourself. You, you, think you, you, you think you're special because, and you are special because you're having a child and you've never been with the man before, but as old as I am, and I was barren, and guess what? Look at this big baby sitting in my stomach. And you know, if you think this is uh, the daddy, it ain't, man. This is God. Can I let you know that God will put you around people and say, if God did a miracle work in their life, he'll do a work in your life. He'll open doors for you as well as he opened for them. Give him a shout in this house. Thank you, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I uh, think about, I've got a, um, like five grandchildren. Talk about one of them. They, they kind of get, they tell me, be careful when I say their names or whatever. One says, don't talk about me, Papa. Two, you talk about Jesus. You believe that? <laughs> but, yeah, but she ain't running nothing. Yeah. <laughs> But I remember one in particular, I had took him to the park and um, I tried to wear him down so they could be tired by the time they get home. We run, we jump, feed the ducks, climb on the things, have them do push-ups, push-ups, have them run, sprint, race each other. So they'll be tired when they get back. Well, one was fairly, very tired actually. Got back home and um, she looked at her dad and the other uh, grands was gone. She was by herself, looked at her dad and she knows that if she asked me something in front of her dad, and um, she'll probably get it because, um, you know, your dad says, well, I'm your, mom, I'm, I'm your dad. And then they look at, their, look at my son and say, well, he's your dad. And uh, so they understand that real well. So it was time for them to go to bed. And they wasn't trying to go to bed. And so, so I said, yeah, let them stay up for a while. And then they looked at the dad like, yeah, let us stay up. And we're sitting in the chair. <laughs> And she's tired. I know she's tired. She begins to nod and wake up and nod again. And, and then finally, um, she goes off to sleep for a while. And, she, and then she thinks of something and she'll reach over and feel my face to make sure I'm there. And, and, um, and then she'll go back to sleep. And then I said, I'm going to take her to bed. So I take her on my shoulder and she's feeling just to make sure. And I'm, I, I'll reassure her, hey, I, I'm here. I'm here. And then we, we get all the way upstairs and I got to figure out, now, how do I get her in the bed? And me leave and go to bed so I can get some sleep. 
So I lay down, and something happens. She'll feel the jerk. She'll reach right over and start feeling my face and, 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 and wants to just know that, that, that she's not alone. And then finally I squeeze out, squeeze out, and she's still, still checking. Now, can I let some of you all know that we're like that as well? You know, I fret if you're not there, God. I, I need to feel you. I need to touch you. I just need to know that you're there. As long as you're there, I'm going to be okay. And right now, sometimes somebody needs to just go, I just need to know you're there, God, because as long as you're there, I'm going to be all right. I don't have to fear, don't have to fret. Man, I, 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 I sense that the, the next morning she got up, she looked at her mom. She said, Mom, so how come Papa put me in the bed and why did he leave me? She said, Papa didn't leave you. You know, he was still here. All you had to do was just cry, just, 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 just cry out. Can I let you know sometimes, folks, that God didn't leave you? He's right there. All you got to do is cry out when you need him. Somebody give him one, 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 one praise in the house. He, he's worthy of it. Here's what we have to do. We have to learn to acknowledge his presence. Shout it with me. You got to learn to acknowledge his presence. Now, understand when we don't, acknowledge his presence what we do is ignore his presence thank you God if God is with us and we believe that then we have to acknowledge that he's here no wonder the scripture says in all trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding and all thy ways do what ignore so to to not acknowledge means that we ignore thank you God and can I just share this with you? I think that many of us have ignored the presence of God. We've ignored God's presence in the church. He wants to do something special. We'll look at our watch. God is saying, God says, I, I, I want to do something. My presence is, well, you know, God, well, you know, we got a program right now, God. God says, I want to do something with your finances. You say, well, no, God, I, I got a plan. I got a financial plan. God says, well, well, I am God and I'm the one that gave you what you have. Wow. Some of you all have been having even, even, even questions about, you know, God, which way should I go regarding this? Can I let you know that when God is speaking to you, he doesn't want you to ignore his voice. That's why the book of Revelations 2 and 29 says, let him who hath an ear hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Can I let you know I believe the Spirit is saying something to the church even now? Let me ask you, are, are you willing to listen? Are you willing to hear? Thank you, God. I got a, a couple of points on this, and, and this, is, this is pretty important, important to me. I, I think it'll bless you as well. You know, I think we should acknowledge God, His presence, and this is what I'm going to be sharing. Even next year, God has given me the sermon series for the beginning of the year, and I'm pretty excited about it because I've been studying it for all year. I, I have, and I said, "Man, thank you, God." But 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 let's 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 do this. Let's 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 say this is we need to acknowledge God's presence, whether we feel Him or not. Sometimes you feel Him, and are, are, are you there, Papa? Yeah, yeah, I'm here, babe. But whether you feel him or not, because you're not going to feel him all the time. And sometimes we make the mistake of thinking that because I don't feel him, he's not there. Some of y'all at that place right now, you say, well, God, I haven't felt you in a while. Well, if, if he's with you, whether you feel him or not. Feeling is an emotion. Emotions come and go. Somebody give him a real big shout in this house. We need to acknowledge him whether we think we need him or not. So, Pastor, explain that one. Some of us think we can do a whole lot of stuff on our own. God, if I need you, I'll call you. Really? Really? You really think that, you know, you don't need God? You can't get up without God. You can't open your eyes without God. You can't stand on your feet with God without God. Thank you, God. So don't, don't, don't say whether, you know, I'm not going to acknowledge you. I'm only going to acknowledge you if I need you. No, you need him every day. Thank you, God. We need to acknowledge him whether things are going well or not. 
So, so, so you say, well, I'm going to not acknowledge you, God, when things are well, but when things are not going well, I'm going to ignore you. Oh, man, that, you, you, you missed it. You missed it. I just want to challenge you. Here's, here's why it's so important. Thank you, God. When we acknowledge God, and, 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 and take, a, take a moment right now, right where you are. Close your eyes for a minute. And I'm, I'm trying to wrap up, but I feel the Holy Spirit. Take, take, take a moment right where you are and just acknowledge that he's next to you. He's on the inside of you. He's brought you. He's made a way that God has sent his son Jesus to die for you. And then he rose for you and he's coming back for you. And he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That means he's with you right now. The presence of the Lord is here. He's here. You just have to become a sensitive to the spirit of God. Just say, with me, God, thank you for being in my presence. Thank you, God, for being right here. Some of y'all are experiencing him right now. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for your presence. Thank you for your presence, God. Thank you for your presence, God. Because in his presence, there's healing. In his presence, there's deliverance. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just, in, just enjoy this moment right now. It's just a matter of you sensing and being sensitive to his presence. Thank you, God. And you can be by yourself. Some of you all know it. You've been in your car. <laughs> No praise and worship team, no music, no band, no nothing, and just you and Jesus. You'd be in a focus on him and just, God, I acknowledge you. Thank you, God. Some of you all need it this moment right now and just say, Lord, thank you for your presence. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for Every worry drops powerlessly behind you when you place your attention upon him. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Forget about working. Forget about who's cooking and who's not, what, what gifts were purchased and which ones weren't. Just, just focus on him right now. You don't have to do anything, but just enjoy his presence. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you for your presence. Nothing like the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Why don't you stand on your feet with me? Thank you, God. Woo! You all sense his presence still? Come on, just give him a praise right where you are. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you. Let's, let's bless him real big. He's God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I'm, I'm hearing from him right now. I want to hear from him right now. I really do because can I share with you that the more you acknowledge his presence, the bolder and stronger and more confident that you become. You, you become super, I mean, you become amazingly bold when you know God is with you. You don't have to run from anybody. Why? Because if I got God with me, and I'll, I'll give you an example. I'm sensing his presence. We used to have a family, not some of y'all, I better be careful about it throwing names out but but it was it was like about mm -hmm, it was not about it was nine DOS kids and uh, and uh, there was a bunch of us and if I ever got in trouble by myself is one thing but when I come back with eight more I wasn't alone and it's something about just knowing that God is with you. That's, that's what dogs get. Can you imagine when you come back with God? That's why David wasn't shook up. Man, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Jesus came that we would never have to be alone. That he is with us. So again, you're bolder. Say it with me. I'm bolder. I'm stronger. I'm more confident when I know God is with me. 
And I, I pray this week that you just get some boldness in you. Not be, they say, why are you so bold? Man, I, I got somebody with me. They say, you packing? No, I ain't packing. And then I might be. But I'm rolling like this because I know who's with me. I want you all to have a whole new attitude, a whole new pep in your step, a whole new swag. Why? Because you're not by yourself, but God is with you. Give him a praise in this house. Woo! Thank you, God. There's someone in the house. Yeah, you all feel his presence as well. Thank you, God someone in the audience that you need someone to pray with you and stand. You've been in the midst of a battle and you think that you're by yourself. In fact, you've been even dealing with some I'm you've been in this moment where you even feel like, wow, I'm, am I in this by myself? Can I let you know you're not by yourself? I want you to know that God is with you and you're victorious. You just need to stand in agreement with someone whether it's healing whether it's deliverance, can I just remind you that you're not by yourself and when God is with you, all this other stuff drops powerlessly behind you. There's someone, bring, bring that down just a little bit, sound man. I want to also let you know that there's someone out in the audience, I'm talking about even the television audience and streaming audience, I want you to know that, man, you're not by yourself, you may be at home but God wants to speak to you right where you are. He wants to heal you, deliver you. He wants to save your soul. And I just want you to take a moment. And those that are in the audience, I want you to begin to pray for those that are lost. Pray for your family. Pray for those that are struggling during this time, especially. You have authority. Rebuke the very spirit of the enemy that wants to attack their minds. Thank you, God. That we are strong. Why? Because of the one that we're with. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. I even sense, man, and, and I, I sense you especially as a mom in the hospital. And, and you are there thinking that you're by yourself, but in the hospital, God is with you as well. And I just want to pray for you and want to pray for the one that's incarcerated and maybe watching. I want to pray for the one that has all type of money, but you still have loneliness. I want to pray for the individual that just, you just freshly came out of a divorce and you feel like you're alone. And the one that lost a loved one. Thank you, God. Will you all just begin to intercede right where you are? Some of you may have a heavenly language that you may want to pray in. But God, we thank you for your love. And if the, there's someone in the audience, come this way. Don't let anybody distract you or dissuade you, but you just say, God, I need you, and I've been trying to do life alone, but today, God, I just want to acknowledge you. I'm tired of ignoring you, but God, your will be done in the name of Jesus. Your heads are bowed, and some are praying with me. Father, thank you so much for your love and your kindness. We take a moment to acknowledge you right now as my Savior, as my Lord. God, your will be done in my life. I give my life to you, God. Father, I pray for the hospitals right now. The one that feels they're alone. The hospital may be full, but that room, they feel like they're alone. So God, may they know that you're with them. May they acknowledge you, even though sometimes they don't feel it. But just like the granddaughter felt my face, may they feel the face of God in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. That one that's incarcerated, I thank you, God. May he know that you're with him, God, even now or she. May the one that's struggling with loneliness come against that stronghold right now in the name of Jesus. Right now, anxiety, depression, you have to go in the name of Jesus. I thank you, God, for the spirit of heaviness you've given us the very spirit of praise so father may we just give you praise in the midst of that time that we the enemy want us to feel heavy Satan you're under our feet so we give you glory God in the name of Jesus Father, I thank you Lord for the one that says I want to receive you today you can pray a prayer similar to this, this 
God, forgive me of all my sins. Thank you, God, that you sent your son Jesus to die for us. And thank you, God, not only did he die for us, but on the cross, but he rose on the third day. And God, he's coming back to me. I confess it with my mouth and I believe it in my heart. So by faith, I am saved. And God, we praise you for that, those individuals right now. Man, oh man. No, I want to I wanna be obedient. There's a word to the saints, those that are already believers. And the word is this, because when he said, he that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Oh, you're talking to us believers. The word is, is, is this, is that he wants you to Listen to him and obey him. Let me say it one more time because this is not from Jerry Wayne, but God is speaking through me. He wants you to listen to him, stop ignoring him, and obey him. Thank you, God. Now, may the grace of God and sweet communion of the Holy Spirit be with you today and forevermore. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And may the Lord give you shalom. And we ask it in Jesus' name. God bless you. I love you. If you need prayer, come this way. We're standing here for you. Obey him. Obey him.